Hello, and welcome to POS 420. I'm your facilitator, Scott Stewart, and I wanted to take a few moments to go over the process of installing VMware Player and the Ubuntu Nuke Virtual Machine. Uh, this will allow you to, est to establish the Linux environment you'll use to complete your hands-on assignments in the course. Now earlier I sent an email that provides a download link for three files and uh, what you'll want to do is download those files. I would recommend putting them in a single folder. I've called my folder Nuke but uh, you can call your folder anything that you happen to, to like. But uh, you'll download those files to that folder and then what you want to do first is to install the VMware Player. Now the VMware Player is what you will use to uh, use the programs and files that are in this nuke.zip file that we'll look at in a few moments. To install VMware Player just double click on the VMware Player icon here and uh, that will begin the installation process. I'm not going to run that here in the interest of time but uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. You'll answer a few prompts and it will go through and complete the installation. Once VMware Player is installed the next thing that you'll need to do is to extract the files that are contained within this zip file, nuke.zip. Now, even though it is a zip file, if you happen to have a utility like WinZip or the unzip utilities that are provided in Windows XP, you probably are not going to meet with a lot of success using those utilities. Uh, this zip file was created uh, using um, another zip tool. I, I don't know exactly which tool they used to build this originally but I found that uh, WinZip and the unzip utility in Windows XP have a have a particularly difficult time with this so I provided a utility called 7-zip and that will successfully extract this file so what you want to do once you've installed VMware Player the next thing you want to do is install this 7-zip utility and again double click on this and it will run through an install process for you very quickly and uh, once you've installed these two programs the next thing you want to do is to extract the contents of nuke.zip. To do that, just right click on the nuke.zip icon and you'll notice, so we'll run that. The extract process itself uh, will take several minutes. Um, depending on the speed of your machine, it could be anywhere from four to eight minutes. Uh, maybe a little longer if you have a slightly older system. And notice that it has already extracted some of the files. Um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and continue with this video as soon as uh, this process completes. Once the extract process is completed, you'll notice uh, several new files have been created in your folder. Um, an icon file, a virtual disk file, a text file with some information about the Ubuntu environment, and uh, you have a file here that's called nuke.vmx and it is identified as a VMware configuration file. Now so long as your VMware player installation completed successfully and that was the first step that we did after downloading these files you should see these icons um, and the files properly identified as VMware files. If you don't see that you may want to go back and make sure that you successfully completed the VMware player installation. Now, like I said that has to be done first before you can make use of these files. So just to review the steps uh, download the three files, install VMware Player first, install 7-zip next, extract nuke.zip using the 7-zip utility, and then you will have these files. The last step is to actually start our um, VMware nuke environment, and we do that by double-clicking on the nuke.vmx file. And this will bring up VMware Player and um, the nuke environment. You may get a prompt that says an update is available. If you do, you can just click on cancel uh, unless you want to download an updated version. Not required. And uh, you'll notice what's happening is we're actually going through a boot sequence just as if we were running this on a dedicated machine. Uh, as far as Ubuntu and Linux knows, it is running on a dedicated machine when it's actually, an actual fact, is running as a window inside of Windows. And uh, the execution time or the load time for Ubuntu, it could be two to three minutes depending on the uh, speed of your machine again. Um, Ubuntu, as far as Linux uh, distributions go, is probably the most uh, popular 
um, Linux environment next to things like Red Hat and SUSE. Uh, very popular installation, especially among individuals, not so much corporately, although it is getting some traction in the corporate environment as well. Um, and you will see a progress bar that indicates uh, what all is happening. And, and like I said, just be patient with this because this, this may take up to two to three minutes before you'll actually get a login prompt. At one point, you may actually see the screen go blank after seeing the Ubuntu banner, and this may go on for 30 to 45 seconds. Again, be patient with it. Once the load completes, you will be presented with a username prompt, and your username and password are nuke. Make sure that you uh, make a point to click inside the username box so that you can uh, actually type your information. We'll type nuke. Password is nuke. Of course it won't show up on the screen. We'll press enter and in a few moments we will get a prompt uh, for one more setting that we need to change. Ubuntu gives you the option to use a couple of different desktop environments. One is known as X and the other is used is known as GNOME, and um, or GNOME, depending on how, <laughs> depending on which uh, pronunciation you prefer. I think the purists call it GNOME because it is part of the GNU or GNU uh, utility set. But uh, we'll talk more about what these actually mean in week five. For the moment, take the option to use the GNOME settings. If uh, you happen to click on X, no problem. Um, I just happen to think that the GNOME environment is a little easier to use. We'll click on that. And what you will see first is a basically a desktop with a command line prompt. Uh, these windows work just like Windows and Unit and Windows. You can click on the X to close it down and completely close your desktop. Uh, if you notice there's an icon up here that looks like a little terminal. You can click on that and get back to that window and this is the environment that we're going to be using the text-based environment for the majority of the uh, activities we're going to do in class. Now you do have other options if you notice in this pull downs uh, there are tools like a calculator a file browser which is similar to uh, the file uh, manager in Windows um, you have some options for some editors there are some system tools, things of that nature. But for right now, we just want to be concerned with getting to this this environment here, this um, terminal window. And uh, again, if you happen to close it out, you can use the option right here to bring that back. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to cut and paste between Nuke and Windows, because you probably need to do this for some of your assignments. What you need to do is you need to make sure you run a program called VMware Toolbox within your um, terminal window. So we're going to run this. Just VMware dash toolbox and uh, also put an ampersand after that. Um, that will put this program in the background. We'll put it in um, a state where it can remain running while we do other things. And uh, you run that and you will see this box appear, VMware Tool Properties. Really, there's nothing you need to change in here for the cut and paste. Just minimize, don't close it, just minimize the window. And then from there, anything that you happen to type, uh, any commands or what have you within this window, if you use your mouse button, your left mouse button, and your mouse to highlight text within this window, you can perform an edit copy. And then if you happen to have Notepad pulled up, or uh, Outlook Express or whatever you happen to be wanting to transfer the information to and do an edit paste and paste that information directly and you can also paste from Windows back into the Nuke environment as well and uh, with that wish you the best of success with uh, the environment if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask thanks